In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy, and peace be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our service of morning prayer from St Chad's Lady Barn in Manchester. My name's Mark, I'm the rector here at St Chad's, and I'm joined by Josh, our ordinant, who will assist us in leading our service of worship. Today we celebrate the festival of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In our Gospel reading, we hear Mary's song, the Magnificat, which speaks of God's kingdom, where the lowly are raised up, where the mighty are brought down from their thrones, and where the hungry are filled with good things. And so in our worship, we consider how we might recognise the reign of God and live as citizens of God's kingdom. We know, though, that we do not always follow the ways of God's kingdom, and we often fail to recognise Jesus Christ as our Lord. And so we begin by confessing our sins. Born of a woman, born under the law, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of sin. Let us come to him that he may heal us and set us free. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Galatians. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So, you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 132. O Lord, remember in David's favour all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob, I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. We heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jair. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Rise up, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. This is my resting place forever. Here I will reside, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless its provisions. I will satisfy its poor with bread. Its priests I will clothe with salvation, and its faithful will shout for joy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. 
He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel and rem in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the festival of the Blessed Virgin Mary and we give thanks for the wonder of what we call the Incarnation, God dwelling with us as a human being. And that's only possible because Mary says yes. She makes room in her body, in her household, in her life for God. She celebrates in those wonderful words we call the Magnificat, that in God's economy, it is the poor, the lowly and the meek upon whom God's gaze rests. They become hosts for the work of God. For nine months, Mary carried God as a guest, unseen in her womb. Mary made room for God and God steps into our world. Time and again in the Gospels, we see that it's when Jesus is a guest of others that the most profound exchanges, the most amazing things happen. Whether it's in the room of a Pharisee or his friends, Mary, Martha and Lazarus. Whether it's Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Or whether it is people of another nation, the Samaritans. When Jesus is a guest, the love of God is made known. In our psalm, we heard that David longed to make a home for God. He longed to make a dwelling place for the Ark of the Covenants. That was the visible sign of God's presence with Israel. But more wondrously, Mary becomes a new Ark, a home for the presence of God. Making room for others well, that's something that I've missed over the last 18 months. Usually our house would be quite busy with many guests coming and going. But I've missed that hustle and bustle of guests coming and going. Maybe some of us, though, we've missed a bit of room in our houses or in our lives as we've been rubbing up against others who maybe we haven't always chosen to spend time with whether our homes are full or empty, whether our, our housing is precarious or secure, God wishes to be our guest, to dwell with us. And the good news is you don't need to have a declutter. You don't need to clear out the spare room if you have one. You don't need to turf out a house guest to make room for God. But because it's amongst others that we can know the presence of God. The Apostle John writes that if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. When I think of those who make room for others, my thoughts often turn to my grandma Vera. She loved to provide hospitality for friends and strangers, for family and visitors from overseas. If she had to get the pasting table out to make more room, she was happy to do so. We would stretch out across her house, enjoying food and friendship with stranger and friend. For a year, about 16 years ago, Vera provided housing for a young man called Brandon. He was coming to volunteer at her church, working with young people. He was travelling over from the USA and he hadn't yet found accommodation. So Vera tentatively offered her spare room. She didn't think a young man would want to spend 
his year living with an octogenarian. But to her surprise and his, they became the deepest and closest of friends. They remained pen pals for years to come. Where Vera made room for Brandon, she found that she had also made room for God to be at work. Often, my daily schedule would be interrupted in normal times by a knock at the door from one of my friends from the Larsh community. Some of you may have heard of Larsh. It's a charity where people with and without disabilities live alongside each other and share their lives together. We learn from each other what it is to be human and how to love God as we love each other. It's not all plain sailing. We fall out. We get on each other's nerves. But I'm slowly learning that when one of my last friends knocks at the door, even if I'm in the middle of something else, that might be the opportunity to learn something of God's love for me, as well as maybe offering something of God's love to them. As restrictions have lifted, one of the first people to knock at our door and to come round to cuddle one of our guinea pigs was Eleanor. Eleanor loves to knock on the door to share a cup of tea, a chat, not to do anything particularly, just to enjoy friendship and company. Maybe to have a joke and play a prank too. I've learned from Eleanor over the last few weeks what it is to make room for others again. And that when I make room for others, I often receive far more than I can give. I'm sure Mary learned that, that as she provided a home for Jesus, she knew the love of God in human flesh profoundly. And Mary became the centre of the early church. Often in icons and religious depictions of the early church, you'll see Mary at the head of the table, surrounded by the other apostles. Making room for others. That was the mark of the early church. The good news is we don't need to declutter our lives totally. We don't even need to be alone and silent to know God dwelling with us. Sometimes all we need to do is make room for others. Whether we're providing hospitality to desperate refugees travelling across dangerous seas or inviting somebody in for a cup of tea. Whether we're going out and spending time with people we might profoundly disagree with or whether we're taking time to listen to a friend in need. Wherever charity and true love are found, God is dwelling there. Amen. Let us declare our faith and the faith of the Church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
our prayers of intercession, the response to God of love is hear our prayer. As love is patient and love is kind, let us pray to the Lord that love will heal the church and the world. As the Blessed Virgin Mary showed us her example of patience, humility and trust, so guide your church in her ways. She showed her beloved son in his human family a gentle love and one that he followed here on earth. So help us all to follow in their example. God of love, hear our prayer. Teach us all to honour both the female and male sides of our nature, especially all our governors. Bless the women who work for justice and peace throughout the world, in governments, organisations or as individuals. Bring kindness and compassion into the places of strife and war, particularly in the Holy Land and the Middle East. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for mothers, especially those known to us, who are affected by poverty or who are anxious at this time. Give them forbearance, perseverance and hope in their troubles. We pray for midwives and those involved in maternal care in our hospitals and neighbourhoods. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for women in societies where their human rights are denied and for those women and girls who are ill-treated by their families and are suffering as a consequence. God of love, hear our prayer. We join with the Blessed Virgin Mary in intercession for those who have died at this time and for those who we remember and are dear to us. We ask that the love of Christ raise them to eternal life. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray in the name of Christ, rejoicing in the grace given to his blessed mother, Mary. Amen. Almighty God, who looked upon the lowliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary and chose her to be the mother of your only Son, grant that we who are redeemed by his blood may share with her in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In fellowship with all the saints and the whole church, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for this act of worship. Whatever you're doing for the rest of the day, I hope and pray that you're blessed by God's presence, God's peace. And so, as we conclude our worship, we depart with God's blessing. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, establish, strengthen, and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Return to the Prospects.